بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Continuing with the book عمدة الفقه كتاب طهارة of Imam Ibn Qudam al Maqdisi. Today, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa taala, we have باب التيمم. Okay, باب التيمم. التيمم في اللغة linguistically it means القصد. قصد means you have the intention. To achieve something, the object, okay, of what you want to achieve. Like niya, for example, it has that kind of meaning. The object, okay, the intention of what you want to achieve. Istilahan, istilahan meaning technically, what is the definition of tayammam? They say, At-ta'abud lillahi ta'ala bi qasd al-sa'id al-tayyib li mashe al-wajh wal yadain bin niya. It is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by seeking out pure soil. We'll explain what pure soil means, okay? As a worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to wipe the face and the hands with an intention, okay? With the intention of tayammam. Tashri, the legislative evidences for it are many, okay? For example, in Surah Al-Nisa, Allah says, فَلَمْ تَجِدُ مَا When you are in a state when you cannot find water, فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَيِّدًا طَيِّبًا They'll make tayammam with pure soil, okay? And also in the hadith of Tirmidhi, we have the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إِنَّ سَعِيدَ الطَّيِّبِ تُهُورُ الْمُسْلِمِ وَإِنْ لَمْ يَجِدَ الْمَاءِ عَشْرَ سِنِينَ Okay? The Prophet ﷺ said that verily pure soil is the purification or the purity, the thing that you can use for purification for a Muslim, pure soil, even if you do not find water for 10 years. فَإِذَا وَجَدَ الْمَاءِ فَلْيُمِسَّ بِهِ بَشْرَتَهُ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ and if he does find water, then let him use that water on his body, for that is good for him. So in any case, the hadith in Tirmidhi is saying that if you don't have water, you go to tayammum. And the ayah in Surah Al-Nisa and also in Surah Al-Ma'idah is saying that if you don't find water, you go to tayammum. So it's something which is well established. The imam, the first thing that he says, he says, وَصِفَتُهُ أَنْ يَضْرِبَ بِيَدَيْهِ عَلَى صَعِيدِ الطَّيِّبِ and the description for tatayammam, the first thing that you do, you hit with your hands, your two hands, upon Sa'id al-Tayyib. Sa'id al-Tayyib, according to the Hanbali scholars and our author, is that which is pure soil and it has ghubar, it has dust, okay? It has to be pure soil and it has to have dust upon it, okay? But in the situation where you cannot get to pure soil for whatever reason, which has dust, they say that you can strike your hands upon something like a mat or a sofa which has dust because of course that dust came from the soil of the earth the wind blew it into the house or anything of that nature okay so if you're in the situation you cannot get to the Sayyid al-Tayyib you can do it upon the dust which is on your furniture for example and on your mats etc and when you make this tayammam, like the brother he said here, you have to have the niyyah, okay? That's for, for sure a must, and it's mustahab to make the tasmiyah, to say bismillah, okay? It's mustahab to make tasmiyah. The imam, he says, darbatan wahida, to hit upon the soil once. Now this is the opinion of Imam Ahmed. He said that there are no authentic narrations that show that the Prophet wasallam made more than one strike, according to Imam Ahmed, okay? and even our author, Imam Ibn Qudam al-Maqtasi, rahimahumullah ta'ala. He says, darbatan wahida, you strike once, fayamsahum bihima wajhahum wa kafayhi. Then he wipes his face and his hands. Liqawli Ammar, liqawli Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, li Ammar, because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ammar ibn Yasir, inna makana yakfika an taqula bi yadayka hakada. It would have sufficed you, O Ammar, to have done with your hands like so. Okay, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he struck the earth, once and then he wiped his face and he's wiped his hands طيب, when you do this striking on the earth how should your fingers be should they be together or should they be separated or should they be like this interlocked separated ahsant okay they should be separated they should be separated okay and then you go ahead and you wipe your face and your hands can you blow into your hands after having struck the earth can you blow into your hands after having struck the earth? There's a narration in Bukhari in Muslim where Umar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu, he says, Darab an-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi kafayhi al-ard. 
In Bukhari Muslim, Ammar ibn Yasir, he said that the Prophet ﷺ hit with his palms the earth. And then he blew into them. And then he wiped his face and his hands. Okay? So the wiping of the face is done how? Show me somebody. Now the whole face has to be wiped, right? Not just the outsides. And what do I wipe with? Not the palms of the hands, okay? The humble scholars, they say the fingers of the hands because that's where the ghubar the, 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 the has attached itself to. And then you wipe your hands like so, one on top of the other, okay? That's how you wipe. So again, you wipe the whole of your face, okay? From there to here and from air, from, from this part of the air to the other side of the face, that's your face. And then you wipe your hands like so. Now, if somebody was to use only one hand for wiping their face, what's the situation here? The ulama, they say this is okay. Because the sifa that we just mentioned is mustahab. It's recommended. It's not obligatory. So however you were to do the wiping, it's well and good. But the mustahab recommended is to do how the Prophet wasallam showed us to do it. When you do this tayammum, there has to be tartib. What's tartib? in order, in sequence, right? And there has to be muwalat, meaning that there's no breaking in the time period, okay, without need when doing this act of worship. There has to be tartib and there has to be muwalat, but when? In which case? Huh? No, we're making tayammam, khalas, there's no water. But I'm saying now, when we make the tayammam, there has to be sequence, tartib, and there has to be muwalat, continuity. But in which case? Huh? So, ascent. If you're making tayammam for wudu, then there has to be the tartib and the muwalat. If it's for the ghusl, then there's no need for that. Okay, and this was mentioned by Imam al bahuti in his uh, sharh of uh, Zad al mustaqna known as Rawd al murbi Okay, Imam al bahuti one of the famous humbly scholars, he mentioned this. The Imam, he says, in if he makes the tayammam with more than one strike, he makes two strikes. Though we said Imam Ahmed said it's not uh, authentically reported, right? But the Imam is saying if he does it with more than one strike or he goes beyond the wrist. Because some of the ulama, they say you go up until the elbows like in wudu, right? So he says if you do do this, then it's okay. So look at the point here, how this Imam, he's an Imam of the Sunnah, he's well known, Imam of Ahl Sunnah. He's a Mujtahid Imam, Mujtahid Mutlaq. But look how he's dealing with the differences of opinions. He's not making a huge issue. And this is what we have to stop doing. If there's authentic opinions amongst other Imams, we have to have respect for those opinions, even if we disagree. But the respect has to be there. طيب. وَلَهُ شُرُوطٌ أَرْبَعَةٌ شُرُوطٌ أَرْبَعَةٌ And it has four conditions when you make the tayammum. First and foremost, what is shart? Condition. So shart means condition. Okay, but what we gave a definition for it. We said, مَا يَلْزِمُ مِنْ عَدَمِهِ الْعَدَمِ That which necessitates in the absence of this shart that the action will be absent. وَلَا يَلْزِمُ مِنْ وُجُودِهِ الْوَجُودِ وَلَا عَدَمِ And it doesn't necessitate that if you have the shart present, that the action will be present or absent. So if you have, if you do not have wudu, ma yalzimu min adamihi al adam. You do not have wudu, you cannot have the action. Wala yalzimu min wujudihi al wujud aw al adam. And when you have wudu, it doesn't necessitate that you're going to pray or you're not going to pray. So this is the technical definition of the meaning of shart. So he said there's four shurut. Ahaduha al ajz an isti'mal al ma. One of them is that you are unable to use water. You are unable to use water. Okay, inability. So without looking at the book, so somebody has an injury where they cannot use water. What else? Water is not available. What else? Huh? Any type of medical issue, right? Things like this the Imam is going to talk about. Very good. So inability to use water is of six types. The Imam, he says the first of them, li adamihi that you cannot find water. You are unable to get to the water. Where's the proof for this? In the ayat we mentioned, right? 
If you do not find water, then go ahead and re revert or go to making tayammum. If one, mas'ala, so we said the first condition is that the person cannot get to water, right? He cannot find water. It's not present. If a person thought that he couldn't get to water, right? It's not present. Maybe the system in the house is broken. Okay, and the next place for where he can get water is like a mile away. So he cannot get to the water. So now he's allowed to make tayammum. But this was based upon a thought. It wasn't, he wasn't sure. He made a mistake in that. And later on he finds water. What is the situation here? Is his tayammum acceptable or does he need to repeat? repeat. He needs to repeat. Because the ulama... Repeat. He needs to make the wudu ahsant. Let's be uh, specific. Exactly. He, no, he prayed with tayammum. He prayed. He prayed already with tayammum. No, here he has to repeat. I'll tell you why. The ulama, they say, This is from what they say is af'al, meaning this is from which are commands. Okay? To make purity is from that which is commands. La min bab turuk. Not from the chapter or not from the section of leaving alone things. Leaving alone the prohibitions. So in the sharia, Imagine that you have two doors where the command, where the sharia comes to you. It comes from Bab al the, the the door of commands, okay? Do this, do that. And also you have Bab al turuk Do not do this, avoid this, okay? So with regards to doing purity, being in a state of purity for prayer, this is min Bab al -af'al. And if this is overlooked because of forgetfulness or out of mistake, then it's not forgiven. You have to still come with it. You still have to come with it when you remember or you find out you were mistaken. What is this based on? It's based on the hadith that we mention often. Whoever forgets a prayer or sleeps over that prayer, then let him pray it when he remembers or he wakes up. You see? So the Bab al-Fa'al, the orders, they're not forgiven. You have to do them as soon as you remember. Whereas the Bab al-Turuq, to avoid najasat, for example, to avoid eating in Ramadan, if that's done mistakenly or forgetfully, then there's nothing upon you. It's overlooked. Why? Look at the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ كَانَ سَاعِمًا فَأَكَلَ أَوْ شَرَبَ فَلْيُتِمَّ صَوْمَهُ فَإِنَّمَا أَطَمَهُ اللَّهُ وَسَقَاهُ Whoever was fasting and he forgot and he ate or drank, then let him continue with his fast, for verily it was Allah who gave him that food to eat or drink. Meaning that the mistakes in the, this part is overlooked. Okay, so this is just some extra information to make it a bit more technical. When you go back to watch the video, it will be clear for you inshallah ta'ala. In any case, the Imam, he said, when you don't have water, that is the first of the conditions for when you can go and make tayammum. The second of them, he said, أو خوف الضرر بإستعماله لمرض Or, you fear that there's going to be some harm upon you if you use the water due to some sickness that you have. Skin disease, you may have a, a, you know, a gash of some sort or anything of that nature. Anything which will bring you harm to your body in that situation, you are allowed to avoid using water. Because in uh, the hadith in Ahmed and collected by Ibn Majah, uh, ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu said, La darr wa la dirar. There's no harming of yourself, nor is there bringing about harm to others. Okay? So whenever something is harmful, you are allowed to leave it. The Imam, he goes on and he mentions the third condition, or the third thing that should be there, which causes you to make tayammum. O bardin shadid, or it's extremely cold. Link to the f second one. If it's extremely cold, you will harm yourself, okay? Because Ahmed, Imam Ahmed, he brings the narration of Amr, Amr ibn al-As, radiyallahu anhu, the companion, he was Junab. He was in a state of Janaba. He had water, okay, but it was extremely cold water because the weather was extremely cold. So he left that alone and he made tayammum. And he prayed, if I remember correctly, he led his companions in the salah. So his companions... The Sahaba, they were a bit, yani, they were a bit doubtful. So they went to the Prophet Sallallahu and they told him what happened. So the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, Ya Amru, salayta bi ashabika wa anta junab. Oh Amru, you prayed with your people while you were in a state of Janaba. 
So Amr, he said, سمعت, الله, سمعت الله تعالى يقول, I remember the statement of Allah where he said, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِكُمْ رَحِيمًا And do not kill yourselves. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is full of mercy to you. So he was saying that if I was to use the cold water to remove my janaba, it may have killed me because it was so cold, the weather, etc. فَضَّحِكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَلَمْ يَكُلْ شَيْءٍ And the Prophet صلى الله when he heard this reply from Amru, he laughed and he didn't say some, anything to Amru. So it was well and good what he had done. So in a state of cold where it may harm you, you can avoid the water even if it's there and you can go to tayammum. Now, there's a side point that I want to mention here. In the hadith, what did the Prophet صلى الله عليه say? He said, يَا Amru, صَلَيْتَ بِأَصْحَابِكَ وَأَنْتَ جُنُبٍ Oh Amru, you prayed with your companions while you were Junub, in a state of Janaba. So the ulama, they have two opinions about tayammum. One group of scholars, they say tayammum is rafi'. Rafi' lil hadith. It removes the hadith. The other group of scholars, they say tayammum is mubih. Meaning it's, it gives you permission to do the act of worship. But you remain in the state of hadith. You see the two differences here? One is that they say it's rafi'. It will remove the state of hadith. So if you remove the state of hadith, it's like you make tayammum, it's like you made wudu or, or ghusl. You can do whatever you want to do. The others, they are saying, no, it's mubih. It's only permitting for you to do that particular act of worship. So there's restrictions upon it. So the ones who say that it's mubih, where did they get one of their evidences from? From the statement of the Prophet Because the Prophet knew that Amru had made tayammum, but he still said to him, you prayed with your companions while you were in a state of Janaba, meaning that the state was not removed. Okay? So this is a side point. The Imam he mentions also the fourth point, You have water, but if you use that water, you may be in a situation where you are in dire thirst, or your companions who are on a journey with you, or the animals that are with you. So if any of these situations arise, you can leave alone the water for drinking, okay, for yourself, your companions, or your animals, and you can go ahead and make tayammum. Now the fifth condition, he mentions, أو خوف على نفسه أو ماله في طلبه Or the person fears upon himself, or he fears upon his livestock that he has with him, that if he goes and looks for the water, either my livestock will perish, or somebody will steal them or harm them, or I myself will perish or be harmed. Like for example, if you are in London on a Friday night and you want to go and look for water and you're too scared, those of you who have lived in London have experienced some of this at times. I myself once found myself in that situation. Coming back from the masjid, I landed in a riot. There was literally a riot taking place and there was chaos everywhere. Cars were exploding, people were robbing each other, smashing the windows of the shops. So in that situation, if the person doesn't have water in the house, he doesn't have to go out because he's sure He's quite sure that some harm may befall upon him. Okay? So if you, if you know, for example, that there's something harmful out there that can harm you for sure, then you don't have to go out and look for water. Okay? In that situation, you don't have to go out and look for the water. You can just make the tayammum. Tayyib. How far should a person go and search for water in a normal situation? How far should they go and search for water? The Sharia hasn't given a definition, so they say al adatu muhakkama. The urf of the people is what is going to determine this. The habits and customs of the people. So whenever the Sharia doesn't give you information on something like this, you go back to the customs of the people. As long as the customs are not something which are un-Islamic, then the customs will define for you what you should do. So the person has to look for water, but only if he thinks that he is likely to find water. If he's sure that he can't find water, خلاص, يكفي. He doesn't need to go searching for the water, okay? The Imam, he says, أو أو إلا بثمن كثير. The inability to find water, unless or except in a situation where the price of the water has been raised a lot. So if the price of the water has been raised a lot, you're able to get the water. In this situation, you don't have to buy it. Even if it's only been raised, but how much is a bottle of water here? Two riyals, right? Very cheap. Allah mabarak. But if they put it up to six riyals, you don't have to buy it. Because it's gone beyond that what it should be. Though you can afford it. You see? But of course, every one of us will still buy it. But they're just saying to you, you have this ease that you don't have to buy it if the price is put up. Okay? High. Higher than what, sh what it should be. The Imam, he says, فَإِنْ 
أمكنه استعماله في بعض بضنه. If you're in a situation where you have water and you are able to use it in part of your body, not all of your body, so part of your body is covered with some type of medicine. You cannot put water there, right? The Imam is going to tell us that you use the water on the rest of your body and for that part which you couldn't touch the water for, what do you do? You make tayammum. That's the first thing he's mentioned. Or he said, Or you find water which does not suffice you for making a complete wudu. So in both situations, what do you do? He says, Use the water that you have and make tayammam for the rest. So two situations. First situation, the person cannot use water in some parts of his body. He uses what he can, and then what he left, he made tayammam for it. Second situation, person only has a little bit of water. It's only going to cover half of the wudu. He uses what he can, and then he makes tayammam for the rest. Okay? Wadih. Why does he need to use the water knowing that he cannot fulfill his whole wudu? Why does he need to use the water knowing that it's not going to suffice? Why can't he straight away go to, to tayammum? Because they say that they, you have to use the water so it becomes your situation that you are now from those who need to make tayammum. Because as long as you have water, you're not from those who need to make tayammum. And also, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fattakullah mastata'atum. Fear Allah as much as you can. Meaning implement the commands of Allah as much as you can. So having that little bit of water for her means that you have to use it to fear Allah as much as you can. Okay, this is what they say. This is the opinion of the Hanbali scholars and the Shafi scholars and Shaykh Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala. The Ahnaf, the Hanafi scholars, may Allah have mercy upon them, and the Maliki scholars, they say no. They say because this qaida, لا يجمع بين ال... لا يجمع بين البدل والمبدل له. You do not join between the original tahara and the replacement for tahara. Okay, لا يكون تهارتين في نفس الإبادة. There's no two taharas, two types of tahara in the same act of worship. They're saying this. Okay, this is their qa- one of the qaida that they have. The uh, Ahnaf, the Hanifi scholars, and the Maliki scholars, and also they have other proofs. They have, for example, from the Quran in Surah Al-Mujadala, وَالَّذِينَ يُظَاهِرُونَ مِنْ نِسَائِهِمْ ثُمَّ يَأُودُونَ لِمَا قَالُوا فَتَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةٍ Okay. مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَتَمَاسَ فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصُيَامُ شَحْرَيْنِ So in this verse, in Surah Al-Mujadala, where Allah is talking about those who make uh, dhahar upon their wives, which means that it's a, it's a pre-Islamic custom, they would say to their wives, you are like my mother's back, meaning I'm not going to touch you, I'm not going to approach you for relationships, right? So the verse says that those who said this, but then they want to make kafara. They want to go back to their wives. What do they have to do? Huh? What did the verse say? What they have to do? They have to free a slave. And if they cannot free the slave, tahrir raqaba. If they cannot free the slave, then they have to fast two months. So they're saying, what do you do in the situation when a person can free, he can afford to free half a slave? Does he then free half the slave and then go to the two, fa- to the two months of fasting? Nobody on the face of the earth would say that. So they're saying, likewise, we say that if you can do half of the wudu and then do tayammum, nobody says that according to their opinion. But our Imam, he says what? He said you have to use the water and then make tayammum. Okay? The extra information is for your benefit to go back and to watch. But the Imam, he says, use the water and then make the tayammum. Use the water wherever you can and then make the tayammum. The Imam, he says, a a second situation or a second condition. So the first condition was talking about the first condition was talking about what? He says, Ads and isti'mal ilma. The inability to use water. And then he broke that down into six points. The inability to use water was broken down into six points. Now, the second condition for making tayammum is al waqt, is the time. Okay, is the time. He says, You do not make tayammum for the obligatory salah before its time. Why? Huh? You may find water very good, Ahsant. You may find water, but what else? I mentioned it, the two different opinions. Right? So one is Rafi', one is Mubih. According to those who say it's Mubih, they say you can only make tayammum at that point when the need arises. 
the need will only arise when the time for the salah comes in. That's when you can make the tayammum, okay? According to those who said it's mubih. And from the evidences, we mentioned the previous evidence, right? Uh, of uh, Amu ibn al-As, where he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, you prayed with your companions and you were a state of uh, Janaba. Also, the other evidence is the hadith we mentioned before in Tirmidhi, which spoke about that you can make tayammum even for 10 years if you don't find water. But then at the end of it, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِذَا وَجِدَ الْمَا فَلْيُمِسَّ بِهِ بَشْرَتُهُ أو فَلْيُمِسَّهُ بَشْرَتُهُ But if you do find water, then use it upon your skin. Meaning make wudu with it, make tahara with it. So this shows you that it's mubih and not rafi'. If it was rafi'a, the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't say, once you find the water, go ahead and make wudu. Okay? But in any case, what was I talking about just there before I went on a tangent? I said that the person shouldn't make tayammum for the obligatory salah until the time has come in. And also according uh, a part of the time, the conditions for the time, is that you cannot make the salah for the nafila, for the supererogatory prayer, prayer, the optional prayer, in the time when it's forbidden for you to do optional prayers, like <coughs> huh? after you've prayed asr, okay? Like after you've prayed asr, for example. So in the forbidden time, you cannot make the tayammum for the supererogatory prayers. The third condition, and we've only got a few left. The third condition, the Imam, he says, niyyah. You have to have niyyah. If you make your intention to make the tayammum for the nafil prayer, the supererogatory prayer, the optional prayer, lam yusalli bihi faridah. Then you cannot pray with that intention, the faridah, why? Because the nafil, the supererogatory prayer, is less than the obligatory prayer. So you've made the tayammum for the lesser prayer. You cannot use that tayammum to go up and include the faridah prayer, okay? But, وَإِن تَيَمَّمَ لِفَرِيدَ But if you made the tayammum with the intention for the obligatory prayer, فَلَهُ فَعْلُهَا وَفَعْلُ مَا شَاءَ مِنَ الْفَرَائِدْ وَالنَّوَافِلْ Then you can do whatever prayer that you want. You can do the obligatory and you could do the nawafil prayers, okay? If you made the intention to make tayammum for the obligatory prayer. Okay, clear? Until the time of the prayer goes out. Until the time of the prayer finishes, then you have to make another tayammum for the next obligatory prayer. Okay? You have to make another tayammum for the next obligatory prayer. The Imam he says the fourth thing that we have to consider, the fourth condition. And he's speaking about turab. Now, what type of soil do we use? He says, فَلَاتْ يَتَيَمَّمْ إِلَّا بِتُرَابٍ طَاهِرٍ لَهُ غَبَارٍ Mentioned this already. You cannot make tayammum except for that which soil is pure and it has ghubar. It has dust. Okay? This is the opinion of the Hanabila scholars. The Hanbali scholars, they say that it must be with that which is pure soil and that which has dust. The Hanafi scholars and the Maliki scholars, they say no, anything upon the face of the earth. Sayyidun Tayyib means anything upon the face of the earth. Why? Because in the hadith in Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said, جُعِلَتْ لِي الْأَرْضِ مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا فَإِيُّمَا رَجْلٍ مِنْ أُمَّةِ أَدْرَكَةُ الصَّلَاةِ فَلْيُسَلِّهَا The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith where he mentioned five things which have been given to him. He said one of them that the earth has been made for me as a masjid and purification. So any person that the prayer comes upon him, to let him go ahead and pray. Meaning the earth, wherever he is, is a masjid for him and purification. He can use the earth for purification. So it means anything on the earth which is pure, according to that group of scholars. Our Imam, he's saying no, it has to be sa'id, pure soil with ghubar. It has to have dust. The other scholars, they say no, any type of thing which is on the face of the earth, which is pure. You can put your hands upon it and you can go ahead and make tayammum. Tayyib, what do you do in a situation where you're like in the hospital, for example, and if it's a good hospital, there's not going to be any dust. If it's a bad hospital, you will find dust. If it's a good hospital, no dust. What do you do? If there's no, you're sure there's no dust, either you call somebody, they will bring it for you. If nobody's there to bring it for you, you pray upon your situation. Fear Allah as much as you can. You're unable to do more than that, then there's nothing upon you. If you can get it, you call somebody. If you can't get the, the tayammum, you just pray without making tayammum because you don't have to do anything, no movement, because there's no fa'idah in the movement. The fa'idah is in the actual act. <coughs> yeah, this is what they say. This is what they say. Tayyib. The Imam, he says, 
tayammum is broken by that which breaks taharatul ma. The Imam, he said taharatul ma. Tayammum is broken by that which breaks the purification of water. Why did he not say by that which breaks wudu? Why did he choose this wording? Bima yubtilu taharatul ma. He was very specific in his wording. Why? Because he wanted to include that which, that which requires ghusl as well. Okay, if he said wudu, it would mean just for wudu. But he was very specific in his wording. He said taharatul ma, meaning both tahara. Taharatul asqar wa taharatul akbar. Okay, the small and the big tahara. Tayyip, the imam says wa khurujul waqt. Okay, another thing which breaks your tayammam is khurujul waqt. When the time for the prayer finishes, then your tayammam is broken. According to which opinion? The opinion which says that it's rafi' or the opinion which says that it's mubih. Mubih, right? If it's rafi', khalas, you can pray with that tayammam as much as you want, okay? Until you break your wudu, that is. So he said, khuruj al waqt breaks your tahara. You with me? Now I'm going to give you a situation. There is a situation where the khuruj al waqt for the salah, according to our imam's opinion, doesn't break your tahara. How can that be? So the Imam is telling us that when the time finishes, your tayammam now is broken. You have to go make tayammam again for the next prayer, the next faridah. I'm saying to you that even according to this opinion, there's another situation where this opinion won't apply. He's combining, he's making jam ta'khir. He's making maghrib at the time of Isha. Okay, so the time for maghrib has gone. Okay, you've prayed maghrib. Now you can also pray with that. Isha, why? Because it becomes one time. Okay? Tayyip. One of the mas'ala which I think is quite important, okay, and it's mentioned by the Hanbali scholars, they say, for example, that if you hope to find water, you hope to find water, right? You have real hope that you can, you can find water. But it's going to be near the end time of the prayer. It's going to be near the end of time of the prayer. Then you should delay the prayer until that time when you find the water. Okay, and in fact, they say even if the time is going to lapse, even if you're fearful that the time is going to lapse, but you're sure that you can get to water, they say you should go ahead, delay the prayer, and get to the water because it's better for you to pray with the proper purification, okay, than to, uh, to do without. So, again, this comes down to the difference of opinion is it mubih or is it uh, rafi, okay. Even if the time passes, okay? Not according to the Hanbali scholars, but other scholars, they mention that, okay? The Hanbali scholars, they say, you should, you should as long as you're in the waqt al-ikhtiyar, in the preferable time, okay, which is not the waqt al-durura, which is right at the end of the time of salah, then in that situation, go ahead and delay the prayer. Don't make tayammum and pray with jama'ah. Delay the prayer so that you can pray in a state of wudu, meaning having used water or uh, having made ghusl, okay? Some of the ulama, another mas'ala, they say, the Hanbali scholars, they say that if you're going to pray Jummah and you're about to miss the Jummah prayer, okay? So if you go ahead and you find the water, you get it out of the well. By the time you got the water out of the well, it means that the time for the Jummah prayer or the Janazah prayer is going to pass. They say in this situation, you can make Tayammum. Why? Because they said the Fadila of this Salah should be caught because it's not repeated, right? It's not like the five daily salahs that you repeat it or you make it up if you missed it. So if you're going to miss the Juma Salah for whatever reason, then you can go ahead and make the tayammum, which will save you time, and you can go ahead and you can pray on that. Tayyib. For the ordinary, no, you shouldn't do that. Exactly. If you expect to find water, then you can delay it. But uh, ordinarily, you should just make tayammum if you are without water. Tayyib. So the Imam, he says, uh, if the time of the prayer goes, that breaks your tayammum. And also, from the second to last, he says, ala ma. Now you are able to use water. So first you were sick, you couldn't use the water, you were able to make tayammum. Now you're better, so again, you cannot make tayammum, now you have to use water. Now, in a situation where you're praying, right, you've started to pray Allahu Akbar after you made tayammum. Your friend says, no, no, wait, wait, I found water. But you're already in the second rakah. You have to break the salah and you have to go ahead and you have to repeat the wudu with water. So you made tayammum 
But you started the salah, the Imam says, Wal qudratu ala isti'mali ma. So you're now able to use water. Okay? And then he said, Wa in kana fi salah, even if you are in the prayer. So you made tayammum, you prayed. You're just about to say, Asalaamu alaykum. Your friend he comes and he says to you, I found the water. So according to this opinion, you have, in fact, according to the Jumhur al ulama, the majority of the ulama, they say, they agreed upon the fact that if you're in that situation, then you have to repeat the prayer with the wudu, okay? And from the evidences of that, we gave already, we said, If he finds water, then let him put it upon his body, let him use it. No, he breaks the prayer. He breaks the prayer. Yeah. I'm, I, no, I normally have a rule that no questions whilst I'm delivering. But because you keep smiling at me, Jazakallah khairan. He's got a very nice smile, so I let him keep answering the questions. Tayyib, akramakallah. We're at the end, inshallah, right? Uh, so we said that if, even if he's in the salah, what if the person has finished the... Uh, sorry, let me correct myself. The first mas'ala which I mentioned where he has to break the salah and make the wudu, this is not the majority of opinion. This is the opinion of the Hanafi scholars and the Hanbali scholars, right? The Jumhur opinion is for what I'm about to mention now. That if he's prayed, and as soon as he's finished praying, water comes upon him. What does he do in this situation? The Jumhur of the ulama, they say there's no need to repeat. Because in the Musannaf of uh, Abdul Razak, rahimahullah ta'ala, it's mentioned that Umar radiallahu anhu, he made tayammum when he was in the outskirts of Medina for one of the salawat. When he got to Medina where the water was available and the time of the salah was still there, he didn't repeat the salah. Okay, so the majority of the ulama, they say if you finish the prayer, then you do not need to repeat the salah. By this we come to the end of it and I'll just give you two more masail. One of them is, what is the situation when you're about to pray salat al jamaa You have wudu, but you're... Imam, he does it. He has tayammum. What are you going to do? Are you going to get out the way let me pray? No, the majority of the ulama, they say it's okay for the mutawadda to pray behind the mutayammum, the one who has tayammum. Except that the humble scholars, they say it's better to do the reverse. It's better to have the one who leads having wudu and the one who's following tayammum. But it's okay if the one who has tayammum leads the ones behind him who have wudu. It's okay, okay? We'll stop at that, inshallah. Anything which was correct was a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shortcomings, mistakes were from myself and shaitan. If you have any questions which are pertinent to the topic, then feel free. Before we start, a few questions as always for those who have managed to leave alone the football and attend. Number one, question one. A woman makes ghusl but doesn't unbraid her hair, her plaits, her braids, she doesn't undo them. What is the ruling for that situation? Yes, very good. So for ghusl al it's not okay. Okay? But for ghusl janaba, it's okay. So for the menstruation, she needs to undo the braids, or he needs, she needs to undo the braids. And for ghusl janaba, then it's fine. There's no problem there. A married couple, question number two, their private parts touch. What is the ruling upon them? Exactly. If there's no insertion, then there's nothing upon them apart from wudu, okay? It's to do with the insertion. Number three, somebody jumps into a pool of water, a nice clean pool of water, with the intention of making ghusl. They have the intention of making ghusl. They jump into the water, they do their somersaults, they swim down, they swim back up. What's the ruling on their ghusl? Yes. It's correct according to this brother. Anybody else? Ahsant, this is the key. As long as they make the madmada and the istinshaq, okay? Then, according to what we said, our author and those who agree with him, then it's fine, okay? So he has to make the madmada and the istinshaq. Question number four. Somebody does as above, they jump into the swimming pool, they make the madmada and the istinshaq, but we say to them, your ghusl doesn't suffice you. This ghusl is not correct for you. Why? Niya has to be there. He made the niya by jumping into. Very good. Niya is a must. But this situation, why? What's the issue here? Exactly. Exactly. Ahsant. If it's for Rafal hadith, if it's to remove the hadith of Janaba <coughs> or even uh, hadith al-Asghar, then 
in that ghusl, it suffices what we mentioned, the ghusl al mudzi which is that you cover your whole body, you make the madmada and istinshaq. But if it's ghusl sunnah like for ghusl for Juma, okay, or something of that nature, then you have to make the wudu with that because it's not for removing the state of hadith. Tayyib. Number five, is tartib and muwalat obligatory in ghusl? La. If it's ghusl and hadith al asghar if it's ghusl in replacement of uh, ghusl, Sunnah ghusl, yes. If it's the sunnah ghusl, then you have to do it. Okay? If it's not, then you do not have to do it. If it's ghusl janaba, then you don't have to do tartib and no muwalat. Very good. Number six, what is the recommended for the junab, the one who is junab, what is recommended for him when he wants to eat, sleep, or again have relationships with his family? To make wudu and? Yes. Very good. To clean his private parts and then to make wudu. Thank you. Somebody has a wetness upon waking up. They see, they, see, they see some balal, some wetness. But they're not sure what it is. It is, is it money or is it madhi? What's the ruling upon this? Yalla. Yalla, he can't tell. He, can, he can't differentiate in this situation. Of course, if you can differentiate, if you know for sure this is money, khalas, ghusl. Right? But this situation, the person wakes up, yeah, and he's not sure. He can't differentiate. Is it madhi or is it money? Yeah, to make the judgment that is madhi. We said that if the person recalls that before he went to sleep, he had some sexual thoughts, right? Then in this situation, we say make it madhi. But if he remembers ihtilam, if he remembers that he had a wet dream, then in this situation, make it money, okay? Madhi in the tafkir before sleeping. But if you have the ihtilam, the dream, then for sure you make it money. Tayyib, wow. With the with the ghusl, ghusl, ghisl. What's ghusl? Ghusl, remember I showed you three different ways. Ghusl, ghusl, ghisl. La, kalima al ghusl yati bi thalath halat. Ghusl is the action. Okay, very good. Ghusl. The the water and and ghisl. The washing of the head, right? The things that you use to clean your hair. Okay, Tayyib. Um, what is the meaning linguistically of Junub? One of the meanings. Staying away, very good. To stay away from something. Yet to Jannab, okay? To stay away. Good.